Hey everyone, welcome back to the world of Pikmin. I am RN, and today we'll be discussing the Lithopod, Mir Slug, and Polyocular Slug family. But first, I'd like to welcome my special guest, Wigwam, who will be co narrating. Take it away, Wigwam. Hey everybody, Wigwam Man here. Long time no see, eh? Today, I'm very excited to be joining RN for this installment of World of Pikmin. Without further ado, why don't we get straight into it? The first family we will be getting into is the Poloclea slug family, comprised of one member, the Bog Swallow. It appears in Pikmin 4 and can be seen emerging from mud pits. Once emerged, it will attempt to inhale any nearby Pikmin for consumption, although this can be resisted by using your whistle to pull against them. And since their attack also relies on suction, they are also vulnerable to bomb rocks that can explode them from within. You can also do a similar thing with stuff like ice bombs. This is what Olimar has to say about the creature. This species prefers to inhabit cloudy, stagnant water like that in swamps, and it spends most of its life buried in the mud and hiding. Using its six eye-like sensory organs, it can detect minute movements in the water and vibrations on nearby land. It will then forcefully leap out of the water and suck up its prey to feed. With its entirely cartilaginous skeleton and somewhat primitive features, like its round chinless mouth, it appears to be some sort of primeval creature. Now that we're complete with the polyocular slug family, we can move on to the main family for the episode, the Lithopod family, comprised of seven members. And we'll be beginning with the Armored Cannon Lava. The Armored Cannon Lava can be seen in Pikmin 2, 3, and 4, and will eventually mature into an Armored Cannon Beetle. They are territorial, which is why they will attempt to shoot you or your Pikmin with boulders as you near them. These boulders can be dodged or used as tools to defeat other enemies. And it's also important to note that these boulders will not damage rock or winged Pikmin. Although in Pikmin 4, they can be lethal to rock Pikmin if the floor is hard. Because they have not developed the exoskeleton of the armored cannon beetle yet, they are also vulnerable to full body attacks, and they will attempt to buck off any Pikmin that are on top of it. Here's what Olimar has to say on this youngling. This specimen is a lithopod larva. This expedition was unable to confirm the existence of any mature lithopods, leading to concerns that the species was extinct on this planet. But the discovery of the creature in larval form eased such concerns. Lithopods like flint beetles use internal metabacteria to aid chemical digestion. These metabacteria can only survive in certain environments, such as within the body of certain insects, so lithopod larvae do not contain any metabacteria immediately after hatching. Larvae feed on partially digested ore, regurgitated by mature lithopods, ensuring the larvae obtain metabacteria they would not normally have acquired. And immediately we're going to move on to the armored cannon larva's mature form. This is the armored cannon beetle. The armored cannon beetle appears as a boss in Pikmin 1 and is immune to all exterior damage unless a Pikmin is thrown into its blowhard while charging an attack. Here's a clip of the boss fight with the armored cannon beetle. And now for Olimar's notes on the creature. This member of the lithopod family migrated to the area during a global climate shift in the atmosphere within the last century. The continental breed of this beast, known as the strong-armed cannon beetle, had the ability to compress inhaled air in a bladder and use the pressure to expel partially digested fragments of stone. This migrant lithopod has developed a stronger carapace than its relatives. Up next we have the decorated cannon beetle. Appearing in Pikmin 2, the decorated cannon beetle is similar to the appearance and behavior of the armored cannon larva, but differs in its red skin coloration and that its bolder projectiles have a homing effect towards captains. This actually can make their projectiles more useful for striking other enemies or even returning the projectile back at them. I used to love doing that back in the day. You can even lie down in front of them, utilizing the knapsack ability in Pikmin 2, and have the boulder pass over you and it will arc back right after. Here's what Olimar has to say about this rather red beetle. This creature is the larval form of a cannon beetle variant known for a diet consisting entirely of eating stones. The decorated cannon beetle favors stones with high iron content, which contributes to its brilliant red torso. The stones these creatures launch are wrapped in a powerful magnetic field, which causes the stones to stray from their launch trajectory when other objects with high metal content, such as spacesuits, are nearby. Extreme caution is recommended for explorers wearing steel-plated armor in close proximity to these fearsome creatures. Up next is the Fire Snout Beetle, appearing briefly in Hey Pikmin. 
It has a magma coloration and it's the smallest member of the lithopod family, being shorter than Captain Olimar. They only appear in one area called the Sizzling Precipice and can be seen hiding in the walls until they emerge to shoot jets of flame, occasionally acting as an environmental hazard. Here's Olimar's notes on this small relative. It emerges from its burrow to spout fire. Why does it do this? Some things evidently need no reason. Up next we have a non-lethal relative, the Arctic Cannon Lava. It is seen in Pikmin 3 and 4, and is similar to the armored cannon lava, but instead of firing boulders, it fires snowballs. These snowballs cannot crush Pikmin or your captains, but can carry them away and displace them. The only ones which are immune to being carried away are winged Pikmin, as they will only be slightly knocked back out of the sky. Although on their own not lethal at all, combined with other enemies, these guys can definitely be a danger. Here's Olimar's notes on this relative. Like other members of the lithopod family, its internal bacteria are specialized to form ice compounds from ambient moisture which it then expels as projectiles. It technically doesn't rely on cold temperatures to create this ice, which is formed by pressurized internal fluids that act as a coolant. When the projectiles rapidly expand, they absorb ambient heat, lowering the air temperature enough for the moisture in the air to freeze. Next is the adult form of the Arctic Cannon Lava, the Arctic Cannon Beetle. Appearing as a boss in Pikmin 4, it is similar to the Armored Cannon Beetle, but differs with snowball projectiles instead of boulders. Who would have guessed? Although one of the main differences being is that this one does not have a blowhole, thus having to inhale from its mouth, allowing for the chance to it to swallow Pikmin by accident. Take a look at the boss fight for this enemy. Here's what Olimar has to say. Upon reaching maturity, the blowhole on its head closes, leaving in its place the pointed crest of the arctic cannon beetle shell. In order to get enough food in nutrient-deficient environments, adult specimens start breathing through their mouths. Some experts have posited that this adaptation caused the species to lose territorial competitions with the armored cannon larva, driving it into colder environments. Though this beetle has increased suction strength, it must ventilate via a spiracle on its abdomen and open its shell to avoid rapid body inflation. Our final member of the Liverpool family we'll be discussing is the Horned Cannon Beetle, appearing in Pikmin 4. It's very similar to the Armored Cannon Beetles, but differs in genetics and cosmetic changes according to Olimar's recordings. Males of this species are known for their horn-like blowholes. When females reach maturity, their blowhole closes and they lose the ability to launch rocks. At the start of breeding season, the females lay eggs on rocks launched by a male. The rocks then become food for the growing larva. Though once mistaken for adult armored cannon beetles, this species is actually a naturalized non-native species that migrated here from another continent. The horned cannon beetle can breed with adult armored cannon beetles, but only about half of the eggs will actually hatch. This hybrid species has the potential to seriously pollute the gene pool. Furthermore, it exhibits aggressive territorial behavior sometimes launching boulders at young armored cannon beetles, which has driven the latter species to the verge of extinction. So there you have it, an invasive species creating an evil offspring that will pollute the gene pool, that also has a very similar appearance to the armored cannon beetle itself. And finally, we will be discussing the Mere Slug family with one member, the Sand Belching Mere Slug. It appears in Pikmin 3 as a boss, and it is a massive brown slug with some freakishly purple lips. It utilizes sand pits and sand projectiles to hunt prey. Take a look at the boss fight for the sand belching mere slug.
Olimar has something cool to say about this one. This giant limbless invertebrate has a distinctive large orifice. It sets a cone-shaped trap in its sandy lair and waits for prey to fall into it. The main orifice serves at both mouth and anus. When it inhales sand, the grains go through its intestinal canal and come out polished and hardened when they are ejected. It's sensitive to sound and vibration. The best time to catch it off guard is when it jumps out from the sand after being startled. Alright, so that is the end of the video, but before we close out, I want to thank my channel members, Oscar Borjas, Alex Billings, and Morgan. And I really want to thank Wigwam again for being a part of this video. I always love collaborating, no matter how big or small the project is. And uh, I'm just going to let him say any last words he wants to say. Thank you very much RN for having me be part of this video. I've really enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to RN and of course me, and I hope to see you guys later. Goodbye everybody.